Hello, this is Sean Mallory from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo. And in this short lesson, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend uh, what we outputted to a CSV file previously uh, by putting something a little bit more interesting out to it. And what I'm going to put out to it is a sine wave. Uh, so I'm going to call this sinewave.csv. Uh, again, for, for writing, I'm going to save this as a new file just for my own, uh, my own usage so I can find it again. So I'm just naming this as file io see okay so I'm going to open um, one called file um, or sinewave.csv and um, I'm going to create a sine wave as I said so again I'm going to leave in all the things about uh, you know couldn't open the file that's all still very important but um, I'll get rid of um, some of this material here which uh, is not of use to me now, in order to create a sine wave, uh, I'm going to need my variable either because I'm going to need a for loop, but I'm also going to need uh, a number of other things as well. So I'll need uh, the value of pi, which I'm going to give as a, um, as a constant. The reason being, uh, I don't expect to change the value of pi later on. Uh, it's uh, a universal constant. So... Now, obviously, we're only approximating pi because we can never give it all. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a constant called uh, capital N for the number of uh, values that are going to be in this. I'm going to make that 100 uh, just to have a nice round number. So my for loop is going to go from uh, 0 to N, and I'm going to print something out uh, for that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out floating point values this time rather than... Um, and I'm going to comma separate them rather than uh, integers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a function here. Now, again, you could put this information into an array and then print it out, or you could uh, do it as a separate variable. I'm going to put it straight into the fprintf statement, but uh, you're, not, uh, you're not stuck with doing that. So I'm going to use the sign function. And by the way, um, I'll probably get away with it here, but I should put up uh, hash include maths.h. So I'm going to do that in a moment. <clears throat> so the sign function... Um, and to do what you say, 2 by pi by, um, now I'm going to put in number 1 here. That's not strictly necessary because multiplying something by 1 doesn't make much difference, but I'll be making a modification to it later on, uh, which you'll see. I'm going to multiply that by i, which is the value that goes from 0 to n. And I'm going to divide all that by capital N, which is um, the number of samples altogether. Now what this will do is it will create a sine wave uh, that completes one full cycle within the n number of samples. Okay, um, so you can take my word for that. Um, but uh, in in later years, subjects such as in digital signal processing, uh, we would be teaching this sort of stuff. But uh, I just want to uh, use it as an example in this particular case. Um, this will also have an amplitude of one, and I'll show you in a moment, or um, yeah, in a moment towards the end of the video, how to change the amplitude of the sine wave as well. But for the moment, um, that will do us there. I think I have everything that I need to put in. Um, so I'm just going to run that there at that. Oh no, I have a mistake. Yes, I'm missing a uh, missing a bracket. And again, go into my directory where I had it previously, and um, we can see that I've got sine wave here. So I'm going to double click on that to open it, and you can see a big load of numbers there. And um, basically, what what you do in order to select all these, because we want to take a look at a graph of this, uh, press Control and Shift at the one time, and then press the um, right hand arrow, and that will bring you uh, right to the end of it. So it selects basically all of it there. I'm sure there are other ways of doing that, but that's the way I tend to do it. Go to insert here and uh, we'll go for a line graph, although uh, any sort of graph would, well, pie graph wouldn't, but column or line would be fine. And uh, we'll just hit that. And you can see that, that there is my sine wave within the 100 different points. That's basically just built, built up. It's not a perfect sine wave. Uh, it's a bit jagged if we were to zoom in on it, uh, but it makes 100 points uh, between, or sorry, over the 100 points, it makes one full cycle. Now, here's where you need to be wary. Um, the CSV file can't actually hold a for, uh, hold um, a graph or anything like that. So if you want to save that, you'll have to save it as an Excel sheet. But uh, again, do, 
don't expect that to be the same file as the CSV file. I'm not going to bother saving it. Um, I'm just going to uh, close it and it'll give me, it'll throw up all sorts of, do you want to save it and so on? And I don't. Um, but just be wary that uh, the CSV file can only hold comma separated variables. It has to be open, be able to open in a text file. Uh, so if you want to make modifications to it later, such as looking at uh, something like um, a graph, um, then you'll have to save it as an Excel file. Now, um, if I want to make it larger, uh, what I can do is I can multiply it because we probably didn't make a point of it there, but the amplitude of the, the top, the peak amplitude was uh, one, which this is a standard sign wave. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a peak amplitude of three. And uh, we'll just uh, run that again. <coughs> Once again, control shift and the right hand arrow. Now you can now see that uh, it now hits a peak of three and a negative peak or a trough of minus three. Okay. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the frequency of it. And uh, this is where I mentioned, so I have to do that by changing something inside the sine function. And that's where I had put this one. So I'm going to get it to do to complete four full cycles within the 100 samples um, by putting a four in there instead of the one. And uh, basically all that's happening here is the I is getting multiplied by that. So I is to go from zero all the way to 100. If it's multiplied by four, it'll effectively get from, um, it'll jump up in sets of four and every 100 of them, when it's divided by n, which is 100, it will have reached 2 pi, which will have done a full cycle. Don't worry if you haven't understood that. That's not quite C programming that I'm telling you about there, but um, just in case any of you are wondering where the numbers come from. So um, do that again. Control shift right hand uh, arrow key. And we can see that uh, we now have a peak of three. We've done four full cycles within the time. Now it looks to have fallen a bit short because the very next cycle would have been up there in 100. And that's because uh, we've gone all the way from zero to 99 and not to the uh, to the next cycle after that. So that's how we could create um, signals uh, that we would actually send out to files for analysis. And what we'll be looking at after this in the next video is how we're going to take information in from a file if we want to do some manipulation on it.